This Power Mill Next Gen Cam training video is going to focus on how to create custom tools out of solid tool holder files, uh, such as they would get from a vendor of a tool holder. Uh, the process is pretty simple. You're just going to actually import the solid tool like you would import any solid into uh, Power Mill. So I'll just go ahead and grab this solid holder here, which is a step file. After that imports, I'll go ahead and fit screen. Power Mill just let me know that there's a solid surface in error there, but that's okay. We aren't going to worry about that because we aren't necessarily going to use the solid itself. So when the solid imports, it's going to import wherever the, uh, the tool holder was designed. What we need to do is get that tool holder all the way up to the uh, front collet nose point uh, to be able to define a pattern for which we're going to revolve that into the solid holder. Uh, first things first, my graphics have a little bit of a uh, an error going on here. So let's go ahead and go into our view options here. And let's go ahead and add another zero to our shading tolerance so we can get that to be a little crisper and sharper. Um, with that updated, let's go ahead and create a work plane that we're going to be using to transform the holder to the world coordinate system. So we're going to go ahead and create a work plane from revolve surface. Let's go ahead and grab that top portion of that collet there and then we'll point the Z axis arrow up into the tool holder. Let's go ahead and activate that. Now here's something that is pretty important and something that you should look for whenever you're getting these tool holder files from your vendor. In order to get a nice clean tool holder, what we're going to look for is the cleanest edge to revolve this around. Now in this case, this is going to be this edge over on the opposite side of the tool here. And we want that edge to be along the X positive of our work plane. We're going to double click on the work plane to get into the work plane editor. And let's go ahead and swap axis from here just because that's pretty easy. And we're going to swap axis and put the X positive on the right hand side towards that kind of solid seam that you see there. That way we're going to point the positive axis on that side. Once you've done that, go ahead and accept that. I'm going to window select the entire solid and we're going to basically translate or transform this entire solid from this work coordinate system point here that we created to the world coordinate system point and that's going to orient this tool holder correctly for us to create our pattern. So what I want to do to do this is I want to right click on the actual model in the explorer tree I want to do kind of a local transform, meaning that it's going to just transform this model, uh, the selected model that's in the tree. Let's just go ahead and transform that. And we're going to go just to the world plane. So it's going to be from the active work coordinate system to our world coordinate system. And I'll accept that. Once I've done that, this work plane is obsolete. We can delete that work plane. And now what we should see is that when we go to the front view of our file and refresh it, we should see that that seam is on the right hand side so that it's kind of just the solid seam that's there. There are no balancing features within the area that we want to create our profile from. Now that the solid's in the correct position, let's go ahead and create a pattern. And we're just going to go into the curve editor and that will create our pattern automatically for us. And what we want to look for is underneath our curve options, we actually see the option for spun profile and activate that spun profile. Now, if everything's set up correctly, by default, you should be rotating about the Z axis or around the Z axis. So that's your axis of rotation. If you change these markers, you'll see that that will actually change both your plane as well as the axis of rotation. We want that to be on the Z plane. And you'll see the uh, cursor here, which is that blue arrow along with that golden circle that's kind of showing you the axis of rotation. You'll also want to pay attention to your active plane down here within your within your status toolbar at the bottom of your screen. And be sure that that is going to project your, your created geometry onto the correct plane. In which case, we're slicing this in half. It's going to be projected onto the plane that's viewable. So I can just hit Create. Once I create that, that'll create the spun profile. I can close out that tool. And let's go ahead and go to our front view again. I'm going to turn off my shade graphics so that I can just look at the pattern itself. 
So currently we have one pattern in here, but what it did was it spun the profile of the entire holder, which also means the internal cylinders of that holder itself. What we need from this profile is just the connection point of our flange, as well as the tip of our collet in line with our work plane here. Uh, that way we can revolve this into a solid within the holder utility within power. So what we want to do now with this pattern is we want to actually segment this pattern. So we're going to go to our cut tool of our segment within the limit cut tool here. I'm going to go ahead and cut this just at this key point right at the flange. And then down towards the collet, let's go ahead and select that one edge there. And then we're going to basically just delete the geometry that we don't want out of there. All the inside geometry. Now currently this particular pattern is a little bit busy. We've got a couple undercut areas that our tool is not going to like. These are things that we don't actually need. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is draw a line from this key point at that neck position there. I don't actually need that detail where the nut and the collet come together. So I again will segment that off at those intersection or end points. Let's go ahead and cut that there and I'll delete that out. Now that I have kind of a smoother profile to my collet definition, I'm going to go ahead and grab the entire pattern, select all, and then again underneath my edit tool, segment tool, there's the option to merge everything into one pattern. And you'll see here that it's taken all the three curves that it had in there and merged them into one. As long as you have a single pattern, then this will successfully revolve within the tool holder utility. Let's go ahead and accept the pattern. Once you're out of the pattern, go to your home tab. Just to create the holder itself, we're going to go ahead and just create an end mill here. Just a generic half inch end mill. The tool itself doesn't really matter. What really matters is that we have the ability to define our holder. Now from your holder tab, what you're going to go ahead and do is in this region right here, which is a pattern selection, you can drop that down and you can select the pattern from the drop down. You can also use the cursor arrow and grab the pattern if you'd like. But this far right button over here is the tool that's going to allow the revolution of that pattern into a holder. Now at the same time, this also grabbed the overhang itself and applied the overhang to the holder. Now that we have the holder revolved, let's go ahead and copy the holder's name out of the model name here. Let's name our holder. And let's go ahead and save this out. Just save that as the model name. Control V to paste that in. Then we can go ahead and save that holder. And just to test this out, let's go ahead and destroy this holder here. We'll clear it, clear out the holder. And then this button over here will grab the folder to open up the location. And here you can see that HSK, we can just hit open to that and that will reapply that holder. You can now use this tool holder in any power mill project or even save it to the library if necessary. I hope you found this power mill video helpful and thanks for watching.